sports editor for the runner here at CHUB. And we're sitting down today with Richard senior forward Jalen Arrington. And uh, Jalen, let me just uh, ask you about the success so far of your senior season. How, how have you enjoyed it so much? Uh, so far, so good. Uh, we had a little ups and downs in the beginning of the season, but um, uh, that brought us together more at the end of the season. And, uh, we got a conference, uh, regular conference championship out of that, so we're looking forward to moving on to Vegas and uh, competing again. Now you got senior night coming up, and uh, a lot of emotions coming into that, especially as a senior. Yeah. Uh, any different mindset? I mean, you guys already clinched the regular season title. Any different emotions going into that? Uh, it's gonna be real emotional. It's, you know, it's my last game on the blue court. Um, all the time and all the hard work that I put in here. And, um, it's gonna be real special though. But um, we want to come in and, and win the games. You know, we want to keep our home winning streak and uh, want to have momentum going into Vegas with a winning mindset. Now you talk about Vegas. Last year, you guys were the hunt were the hunters. Yeah. You had to hunt New Mexico State down. They were the top team in the league. Mm -hmm. You guys this year are the top team in the league. How does it? How has your mindset changed, or has it compared to last year? Uh, uh, last year, you know, making it to the tournament, you know, we uh, were real confident coming in this year. You know, we knew we had we don't have a target on our back. Coach says we don't have a target on our back, and uh, we embraced that. We wanted to work more and uh, have a special special year this year with winning the regular conference championship. Winning in Vegas, so we still have work to do. It's not done yet, but uh, one of our goals was um, complete. But um, with a target on our back, we embrace it and we uh, we're special. <clears throat> now, going back into your story, you grew up in East Chicago, Indiana. Can you uh, detail me your childhood growing up over there? Uh, my childhood was pretty good. Um, crime rates and stuff real high in Chicago, but um, like I said, my parents they uh, took me in, they, they embraced everything. Um, they showed me the ropes that them um, that they went through, but uh, kept me out of trouble. Like kept me in church, you know, number one, and uh, continued to play basketball. Um, been playing basketball since I was like four or five years old. Kept the ball in my hand. Um, my family, uh, it's a big basketball family, so we grew up in and uh, my mind was just focused on basketball and trying to make it out of Chicago. Now, growing up, who were your uh, players that you idolized growing up? Who did you look up to? A couple of my uncles growing up, uh, Etuan Moore, who's, who's in the NBA now, uh, uh, he showed me the ropes. I'm um, watching him in high school, um, him with my uncles and them playing when they won state, when they played against Eric Gordon, and watching them, just uh, realizing that I can do this, that I can be just like those guys, and I don't know, just the support system around me. You know? Just watching everybody in Chicago growing up, everybody has talent there, and I just knew I could play with those guys. A couple of local guys there, Eric Gordon, Indiana, oh, yeah. Yeah. and Etuan Moore, I Yeah. And when did you realize that you were you were pretty good at basketball? Um, I would say around seventh grade. You know, playing against uh, a guy my age. You know, some guys is in the NBA now, like uh, Brandon Dawson, Glenn Robinson, who just won a dunk contest. Uh, playing against those guys, knowing that they uh, they were top, they were highly recruited coming into middle school and high school. I wasn't, but playing with those guys in open gym, I knew I had the feel for the game and I knew I could play. So it all worked out for me. No, I see you went to a private. <clears throat> a private high school, Bowman, Bowman Leadership Academy. Mm -hmm. uh, what was the reason for you attending that school? Uh, the reason was to get my grades and keep everything right and get me ready for the SATs and the ACTs because, you know, in Chicago, I was there for three years. Um, school was on strike. The, uh, the, the grades and everything wasn't, my grades weren't bad, but it, it wasn't preparing me for college. And uh, going to Bowman Leadership Academy would help me prepare and, and uh, stay right. Now, coming out of high school, what kind of offers did you receive from any any college, any schools? Uh, I had no D1 offers. Number one, I um, had a couple D3s and uh, a couple local schools, but it was none that I wanted. Um, so my parents were doing a little research on the computer. We had a mutual friend that uh, sent me to a prep school. I did that for a little bit. That didn't really work out. So um, he, um, the friend he had got me into Ventura College, was all the way in California. I had to pay out of pocket, take out a couple loans, and. Um, and how did you enjoy your stay at Ventura College? Oh, I love Ventura. It's uh, one of the places I like to stay. Um, you know, the ocean is over there. It's my first time in the ocean when I went to Ventura. Uh, it's pretty cool. I love it there. And, um, it's real. It's like it's like Bakersfield with little people. It's like we're family oriented there. And they embrace me as their own. And I love it there. Well, it's all better than the Midwest too. Yeah. Oh yeah, way yeah. in the Midwest. So who was a mutual friend that brought you to Ventura College? Uh, Ray for Austin, you know, known him as uh, Skip to My Loop. He played in the NBA for about what, 10 or 12 years. Uh, like I said, my parents were doing like little research, and their friend uh, hooked us up with Rayford. 
he had took me into his own and uh, showed me a lot of things. And um, I'm thankful for Rayford, and uh, he helped me a lot. Right at Fresno State. Yep. So, <clears throat> why did you end up choosing CHUB over any other schools that you potentially received offers from? Man, uh, I don't know. They wanted me. They wanted me the most. Like I said, Coach Khan called me every day. Like I said, I wasn't familiar with the recruiting process coming out of high school, but I don't know. Coach Khan was calling every day, every day, every day. So I'm like, this is how it is. He's getting on my nerves, but I'm like, man, this coach is really, he's really bugging. But it showed me that their love and support, that they care, and that they really wanted me as a person and as a uh, player. And um, when I came out on my visit with Coach Barnes, that uh, it just felt, it just felt right, the right move. And uh, you know, he's a he's a godly man, and my parents are godly, they're godly so. I don't know, it was the right move for me, and um, it all worked out. Now, you redshirted your first season here at CSUV. Uh, can you tell me the reason behind that? Uh, just to better myself coming in, I wasn't that strong. I was a little, little scrawny guy. So um, coach just wanted to redshirt me, get me stronger, get me faster, and uh, get me ready to, to play at this level. Because, you know, just coming in from junior college, the, the game is a little slower than faster here. So just wasn't ready yet, and I wasn't going to play that much because they had like, Brandon Barnes. Zach Lamb, I said, Grace and those guys, those upperclassmen. So just learning from them and, uh, to help me out. Now, last season you guys won first WAC championship in school history. Uh, can you tell me about how much fun you guys had last year? Uh, it was great. You know, that played a big role in coming to CSUB as well. I wanted to be the first to do something and uh, just put my mark and my stamp on something and building a legacy. But um, it was great. You know, I love those guys last year. I love you, Kev. You know, they showed. They showed, they, they showed us the ropes and, you know, to how to lead and uh, it carried on from, to this year. Now, this year you guys had to replace Kevin and Ali. Mm -hmm. Was it a natural step for you to become a leader of this team? Oh, yeah. Like I said, being here for about three or four years and learning from Isaiah Grayson, you know, Steph Johnson, those guys, and Ali and Kev last year, I knew it would be a little easier because I had uh, other guys this, this experience as well. So it was a uh, it was, it was, was a cool move. Now, I spoke with Brent Rapp yesterday, and he was telling me about the way you lead. You're more of a lead by example kind of guy. Yeah. You leave the vocal stuff up to guys like Justin Pride, yeah. Matt Smith. Why? Why do you find yourself in that in that niche? Why? Why is that easier for you? Um, I don't know. Always growing up, you know, I wasn't the loudest uh, to talk to, to brag about things or say things out loud. I was always known to talk to and just do. You know, don't talk, just do, and uh, just lead by example that way, you know. I don't know, I carry it on to my older ages, and I don't know. Because yeah. Brent was telling me how, you know, Matt or Justin will be talking all practice long, yeah. and then you come in, he'll say two words, and everyone's just going to be yeah. just on it like that. I don't know, I just got a little switch. Everybody knows I'm about business. I'm just about just showing it and just doing it. That's the, that's the way you get it done, just doing it. Now, this season, you guys feel like everything's coming a little slower for you guys? Mm -hmm. Everything's a little easier coming coming a little easier to you guys? Yeah, I don't want to say we were like, uh, we don't want to brag about last year, but, you know, coming in from the tournament last year, we knew we had the confidence. We knew we can do it, you know, being in a close game with Oklahoma, a top, top five team the whole year last year, and guarding those guys, Buddy Hill, and their top guards, we knew that we can come in in this season and uh, be great and be special. Now, speaking about your defense, I always hear Coach Barnes praise you for your defense. Mm -hmm. And I always see you sticking the best the best offensive player on the other team. And I hear the praise from your teammates as well. What does that mean to you, just hearing that from your teammates and knowing the kind of work that you put in and it's all paying off for you? Oh, it means a lot. It gives me confidence on the ones to know to be able to guard those guys and to be able to sit down and defend. But um, I know they have my back. So that's what I know. And uh, I can make a mistake and I know they got me. And uh, the praise from Coach Barnes means a lot just to show uh, my growth and uh, my trust in him. How he believes in me. I was uh, listening to Coach Barnes in the press conference the other day, and he mentioned you guys being the next Gonzaga or Wichita State, possibly. And you are the ones that really started this. Yeah. What does that? What would that mean to you? Just 10, 20 years from now, you look up and you see CSU be up there with those kind of schools. Uh, that'd be real special. You know, that's one thing I wanted to do: come in and break championships here and be the first to do something. So, like later on, you know, what 30, 40 years old, and come back like man. Like, we started this, we did something special here, and that'd be great, you know, um, to build this program and to see where it's, where it's going to end. It's going to be nice. Now, you mentioned guarding Buddy Hill last year in the NCAA tournament. What kind of thrill was that? Uh, it was great, you know, um, 
it was kind of nerve nerve wracking at at first, but um, you know when we got in the layup line, kind of sized him up, see how big he was, and I don't know this guy he he bleeds just like me, he's human just like me, so I don't know it was real special. But um, I learned what I learned from Buddy is you know you can't you can't take a break on every little thing, you know you you miss a you miss a close out, and he's right in the face with the jumper. He was uh, he was real efficient and real real poor. He was a real poor player. Now, do you honestly believe you can play at the next level? Oh yeah, it's a hundred percent. I know I have to work a lot more though, um, get bigger, get stronger, uh, work on my ball handling skills because you know at the next level I'm probably a point guard. You know, there's a lot of big guards in the country, so I know I have to work a lot, a lot harder to get to the next level. But I believe I can. Now, winning the winning the conference championship against New Mexico State, <clears throat> the way you guys won, the fashion you guys won, that that had to be something. Oh yeah, that's something you dream about as a little kid, you know, wanting to play in March Madness and those one shining moments and uh in the fashion that we wanted in and it was crazy. It was it was uh that's on the top of my list. Just seeing that shot go in, it was just I don't know, it was mind blowing and I loved it. I'm, I'm happy I was in that situation. Now moving forward to the NCAA tournament, what was it like playing in Oklahoma City? Hostile environment, it was almost like a home game for Oklahoma. Yeah. Uh, it was great, you know, coming in just like wow, this is where like Russell and Kevin Durant plays. And, in their locker room there, you felt like you was a big league guy. So, you know, you just wanted to come in and just put on for Bakersfield and make your parents and your family proud. Um, and that's what we wanted to come in and do. We wanted to put on for Bakersfield. We came up short, but um, we was happy to be the first to do it like to do that. Now this season, <clears throat> you guys are regular season WAC, WAC, WAC champions. Mm -hmm. Going into the tournament, what are your expectations? Uh, to win it again. We want to win it again. We want to go back to back. Uh, we want to make it to the tournament again. We want to win a couple games in the tournament. That's what we want to do. Now, Jalen, what are you going to miss most about playing here at CGB? Uh, we miss the coaching staff and just the camaraderie of the guys, you know, just being up with the guys, doing stupid stuff with the guys, playing on this blue court, the only blue court in America, um, just seeing how, how much growth it has, you know, me coming in to be able to count the fans and coming in to sell out this now. Like, just real special, just knowing I'm a part of something is great, you know, that's, what, that's the most thing I miss about. Now you're a physical education kinesiology major. What are your plans after basketball, if there is an after basketball? Um, I want to stay around the game of basketball, like I said. Cause you know, basketball brought, it took me a lot of places. Uh, I want to do some physical therapy, maybe uh, some athletic training, just to stay around the game I love mm -hmm. and uh, to help young kids like me and uh, yeah, just stay around basketball. Now, what does it mean to you just knowing that these could be the last uh, competitive basketball games you play ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm just in a moment, you know, not thinking about later on in life, just in a moment right now, just trying to soak it all up and uh, get the job done.